when you're navigating down the Cuyahoga, uh, for the most part, are voters fairly respectful in terms of giving you the space that you need? Oh, you're going to ask me that? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, it's there, there not are perfect. No, it's not perfect. Yeah. And I know, see, it's been, it's been quite a few years since I've been up the Cuyahoga. Um, as I moved through the different ships I was on, I've been captain of the Wasabi Mine in the last six years. Well, it doesn't go up the Cuyahoga. I know that they've, they've made a very conscious effort between the city um, and the boat owners, and they have patrols now that kind of keep people out of the way. Um, and there's still a few. You know, you're always going to find a few. And a lot of it has to do with, let's say, jet ski rentals. Right. You know, pontoon boat rentals, kayak rentals. You get these people that don't know a lot of the rules of the road, don't know the river, don't know exactly what we need them to do to stay out of the way. So you spend a lot of time yelling at them out the window and pointing and sometimes not being so pleasant. You know, I took the Jackson through the Center Street Bridge one time and two kayakers thought hanging on the side of the bridge in the bridge span was the place to be. Any which be? Yeah. Weather alert? Oh. Um, Center button. Modern technology is great, but everything beeps. I, I had another question. Well, you were talking, uh, can you complete that thought on Center Street Swing Bridge? Because that's one of the narrowest spots on the Cuyahoga River. Correct. And these folks were thinking that was a decent spot, but because of displacement or what have you, can you carry that thought forward a little bit? Sure, they, they thought that was the place to be, not understanding that I only got 10 feet on either side of me, and one little thing goes wrong, and in between a steel wall and a steel ship coming together is not where you want to be, and trust me, I got them out of the way in time. So, Captain, can you... We've got an audience that's very focused on Cleveland's waterfront. Okay. We promote the social, economic, and recreational vibrancy of Cleveland's waterfront. A lot of people are discovering or rediscovering the Cuyahoga River mm -hmm. as, a, as a, a, a recreational asset. But one of the things that we like to talk to people is those recreational users have an obligation to share the river, literally, with commercial maritime assets. So Correct. what are the three or four things that a recreational paddler can do to make your life a lot less interesting on the river? The paddle boards and the jet skis and the kayaks, not a whole lot. And part of, the, I think part of their issue, and I don't want to call it ignorance, it's just they don't know which side to be on. Mm -hmm. And you know, a handheld radio and calling us and asking us would be mm -hmm. ideal. You know, mm -hmm. if you're on a regular pleasure boat that actually has a radio, give me a ring and say, hey, where do you want me to go? And I will gladly mm -hmm. tell you. You know, communication is key. And like on the Herbert C. Jackson, I keep pointing over there because she just came in. <clears throat> the captain is in the front window. The bow is another 30 feet in front of him. You could open up the window and yell and holler and everything else. On this thing, which fortunately we do have a PA system that may get used quite a bit more now in that regard. And I will get on that and say, you know, you need to be over here or you need to be over there. They, they think if they're over on, on the inside corner, well, that's a good spot because I'm turning around the corner. Well, no, the, there's times when you get down to about six feet on that, on that corner to try to get around it. Mm -hmm. You need that much room, and you know, obviously they don't understand that. I understand, I get that. But communication would be the key thing. Um, or hurry up and get past this. And I understand on paddle boards that's not a real big option, or even on kayaks it's not a great option. But if you can get by me, because we're going slow. I mean, mm -hmm. we're doing two miles an hour, we're going too fast, at least in my opinion. So if you got a chance to shoot by, take it. Mm -hmm. you know, take it would be the other thing and don't do it 
while I'm in the middle of one of the bridges. And one of the things that we also suggest is before any recreational paddler hits the water, check marine traffic. Absolutely. There's how, how many different assets are there now mm -hmm. to check marine traffic? There's a website, Marine Traffic. Mm -hmm. Any commercial vessel has an AIS on it, an automated indica identification system. And that all transposes onto marine traffic. You can take a look at the car, you can zoom it right up mm -hmm. to the yeah, Cuyahoga I mean, River and see if there are boats coming in, ships coming in or out, moving uh, in, yeah, in the system. The, uh, Do you see one out here on the lake that's heading this way? It, you know, you click on that on that icon and it will tell you their destination. If it says Cleveland, you know they're coming. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that is that's a that would be key. Is there, a frequency, is there a frequency that you monitor constantly? Channel 16. Channel 16. The International Hailing and Distress Frequency. And every once in a while you get the Coast Guard come out and yell at you if you're talking on them. But if someone would call me on Channel 16 and say, Cap, where do you want me to be? I would answer them on Channel 16. They're not going to switch to another channel. Just, a, I don't have time for it. Two, who knows if they're going to hit the same channel. I'm just saying, you know, go over here. You know, go, go. Be on my starboard side, be on my port side, hopefully they know the difference in those. Right. And so yeah, like I say, communication and situational awareness. Mm -hmm. that, that is a big one. They can just check check the you know, you can get it on an app on your phone. Mm -hmm. and see what other traffic is in the area. And the nice thing about marine traffic and the AIS system is when you look at the icon on there, it says Mark W. Barker. So now you know who to call. You know, it'll show you a picture of the ship. I mean, anybody, anybody know what that ship is? No, you can't see the name on it. But you get on the AIS, I can tell you. I can tell you. Okay, somewhere. My point being, John Q. Public does not until they, until they get up close to it. So a little advance warning. So another question I've got, here we are up in the wheelhouse, and your bow is, the, the tip of your bow is how far from, from us here? Uh, it is, what, 590, 590 feet. So one of the questions or things come up, you know, people are down ahead of you in a kayak, and they can see you but your perspective is a lot different looking from here down to there. So what are, they, what are the things that people should be thinking about other than just staying the hell out of your way? Try to stay visible. Mm -hmm. That's one thing they understand. You know, and of course, today the boom is in the air, so visibility is reduced even more. But I can't, once, once you're about, what, 60 feet from the bow, I can't see you anymore. Mm -hmm. in a small boat down close mm -hmm. to the water. I don't know where you are until you pop out back into my visibility one side or the other. So the farther you can stay ahead of us to make your move, the better off you're going to be. Mm -hmm. Now we have, on this ship, we actually have a camera up there, which gives us a little more, you know, advanced warning as to what's going on. But. And the other thing I would really impress upon anybody in not just the Cuyahoga, not so much the Cuyahoga, but any of the other river systems and you're sitting there fishing, don't wait to the last minute to move. I understand the fish are biting, but what happens when your engine doesn't start? Uh -huh. Oh, it started this morning. Well, yeah. okay, great. What if it doesn't this time? We don't stop on a dime. Uh -huh. You know, even in the Cuyahoga, only making a mile and a half, you know, one and a half miles an hour. It's still going to take five minutes to get stopped. Yeah, a lot of things can change in five minutes, and now I'm now I'm backing backing full, trying to get the ship stopped. I'm losing maneuverability.